Number three, letter A. Calculate the work done on a 1500 kilogram elevator car by its cable to lift it 40 meters at constant speed, assuming friction averages 100 newtons. All right, so here's our elevator car, right? It's moving at constant velocity, I'm gonna assume upwards, and it's gonna travel 40 meters. So first, in order to calculate the work done, right, on the uh, 1500 kilogram elevator, I need to consider maybe some formulas that involve work. So one of the formulas that involve work are right over here on the right-hand side. Right, we know that the work is equal to the force applied multiplied by the distance the object traveled and multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance vector. Okay, so why don't we first detail a free body diagram of this elevator? I'm gonna do so right here on the bottom left. So we have some forces at play that are acting on the elevator. So what's one of them? Did you say gravitational force? If you did, you would be good. That's one of them. So the gravitational force is going to be the weight, right? Equal to the weight of the object. Um, and now the weight of the object, remember, is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, that sounds great. And this object does have mass, right? So gravity is pulling down on it. Now, what other force is acting on the elevator? Well, you might say, uh, well, the, it told us friction, right? It says, in the problem, it says friction averages 100 newtons. So that'd be great. That would be another force. Now, where does it point? Well, remember, friction always opposes the motion. So which way is the elevator moving in my diagram? My diagram, it's moving up. So therefore, friction opposes the motion, so it will be pointing down. So I'm going to add that to my picture over here. Okay, and that force there is 100 newtons. Okay, great. Now remember, uh, there is one other force, right? This, I mean, we can think about it two ways. They told us that the car is lifted, right, uh, 40 meters, the, the um, elevator car. So we know that there must be some string, no, well, That'd be some elevator, right? Would you want to? Would you want to go in an elevator that's attached by a string? I wouldn't. A cable here, right, is probably attached to the elevator, and um, since it's moving upwards, we know that there probably is some force, right, pulling it up. Another way to look at it is if it's there's a constant velocity, okay, these forces down here must be balanced, right, by some force pointing up. So let me just detail that right here, okay. So this I'll call the force applied. All right, now, from this information, can we create now a formula that involves these forces? Sure, right, remember, some of the forces um, equals MA, MAX or MAY or MA, uh, MAZ, I mean, if, if you're doing three dimensions. So in this case, we're talking about the Y direction. So now, um, keep this in mind, right? I don't know what FA is, I mean, I kinda do, but uh, I. Right, we'll assume we don't know what it is. So this is saying that the sum of the forces should equal the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. So what are the forces? Well, we just detailed. It's the applied force, right, minus the frictional force of 100 newtons. I'm just gonna write F, F for frictional force for now, minus the weight, right, of the object, that's also pointing down, should equal the mass times my acceleration. Okay. So let's start plugging some stuff in. We don't know FA. We know the force of friction is 100, so that's easy. Right? We know the weight is equal to mg. Okay, so why don't we just calculate that, right? Take the mass, 1500, multiply it by 9.8. We get 14,700. So here we have 14,700. That will equal then the mass, right? Multiply by acceleration, but what's the acceleration? Acceleration is Zippo because it's at constant velocity. So this whole term cancels and the whole right side goes to zero. So now look at this. One equation, one unknown, easy to solve. Just bring these guys on over, add them to the right hand side and then combine them. So we should have the force applied here being equal to, this just simply works out to 14,000 and 14,800, right? Newtons. Okay, so that's the force that's applied. Now it says calculate the work done, going back to the problem, on the elevator. So this is the force applied to the elevator. 
So this would be the force I would use now in my equation over here. So the work, let me actually just move this over slightly just to leave myself a little room for the problem, the steps coming up. So this is part A, right? So the work is simply equal to 14,800 multiplied by the distance it moved. So it moved 40 meters in the same direction as the force. Therefore, it's positive. Uh, this is positive in relation to the force also being positive. And multiply by cosine of the angle between those two vectors. But remember, they're both pointing in the same direction, so that's zero. So the work done is simply 14,800 multiplied by 40. And we get, put this into scientific now. So 5.92 times, looks like 10 to the fifth, right? And that will be in Newtons, okay? Work is, uh, excuse me. <laughs> That will be in joules, okay? Remember, work is Newton times meter, okay? All right, so that takes care of letter A. Let's move on to letter uh, B. So letter B says now, what is the work done on the lift, okay, on the lift by the gravitational force? Okay, so again, we have to think consistent, right? We have to be consistent in our formulas. So the work done on the lift by gravity will be equal to the force of gravity multiplied by the distance the elevator traveled, then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the vectors of theta. Okay, so what's the force due to gravity in the problem? Well, the force due to gravity remembers the weight, and I calculated that over here. Okay, so it's 14,700, so let's plug that in. So it's gonna be 14,700 multiplied by the uh, distance, now I could I could put this in as negative because it opposes right the uh, the direction of this force. What I mean by that is gravity is pointing down, but the uh, movement of the vehicle is pointing up. So I could just plug in a negative and save myself a little time. But let me actually plug in the positive value. All right. So the distance is 40, and guess where the negative actually comes from? The negative sign will actually come from this term. Okay. Cosine now. Oops. Cosine now of what angle? Well, how are they separated? Remember, you might you might say, well, they're zero degrees, but no, they're really not. They're right there. They're 180 degrees, okay? So if you think about it, right here's my axis. I have a the gravitational force pointing down, and I have the direction of motion going up. So what is the angle between these two? 180, okay? So, and I'll just leave it like that. And so let's plug in now 180, 180. And now let's see what we get. So weight, not weight, what am I talking about? My goodness, too many W's, right? I mean, don't you find that way with a lot of the science stuff, the variables, too many, well, I mean, there are only 26 letters, right? So, well, that's why we choose some Greek letters, I guess. In any case, 14,700 uh, times 40 times cosine then of 180. And look at that. It's negative, right? Guess where the negative sign came from? Cosine. Okay. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. So here, look, our value now is 5.88 times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the fifth. And that is in terms of joules. Okay. Actually, well, the 10 to the 5 looks kind of low, right? 10 raised to the 5 joules. Okay, so that is the work done by the gravity gravity. And I said negative, and where is it? There it is. Okay, just seeing if you're paying attention. Letter C, what is the total work done on the lift? So total, total work means let's sum everything up, okay, all the work done by every force in the problem. Now I can calculate this, right? I can definitely go through all the steps, but you probably don't even need to, all right? We can do it, we can think about it this way. The work, the total work done on the whole system, on the lift, should be equal to the net force on that whole system, multiplied then by the distance it traveled and the cosine right of the angle between the force vector and the uh, distance vector. So what is the total net force on this system here in my free body diagram? Remember, it's not accelerating. We found what FA equals, the so applied force is 1,480. And this exactly, four, uh, excuse me, 14,080, 
This value of 14,000. Why don't, why don't I keep saying 14,080? I'm sorry, guys. I, what? Yeah, it's about, it's 1.20 in the morning. And uh, this will be the last video for today. Uh, I'm just a little tired, so please do forgive me. All the numbers on here are right, but for some reason they're not being translated to my mouth correctly. Hence my brain is a little slow. Anyway, all the forces here balance, okay? So all the positive Y components balance the negative Y components, and therefore there is no net force on the entire system. So this value over here is zero. So what happens when you plug zero in for F? The whole right side goes to zero. So the total work done is zero joules on the whole system. All right? So hopefully you're not staying up as late as I am doing these problems. Um, although you probably are. That's totally cool. I like to burn the midnight oil. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe. Hit that like button. If you're feeling a little extra frisky, I guess. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.